Hi, I'm Ryan Samansky, Curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're doing another one of our ship comparison videos, but whereas we normally compare other battleships to the Iowa class, uh, today we're going to do something a little different, uh, and we're going to compare the WASP class LHDs, the amphibious landing ships, to an Iowa class battleship. USS Bonham Richard, uh, unfortunately, was in the news yesterday uh, due to a severe fire that broke out on board and injured several crew and civilian firefighters. So, because this ship is all over the news and uh, this type of ship is fairly misunderstood by the general public, we wanted to do a ship comparison video uh, where we compared a ship that is pretty well known. The Iowa class battleships are all over popular culture. In fact, many people assume that all warships are battleships like this one, even contemporary ones. Uh, so I just wanted to compare how, how that ship stacks up to an Iowa class that people do have a sort of sense of scale for. You can visit these ships all across the country uh, and you probably won't ever get the chance to go on one of the Gator Freighters. So, first let's talk about uh, the events. We are recording this on July 13th, 2020, a day after the fire broke out on board USS Bonham Richard, LHD-6. Uh, she is a WASP-class amphibious warfare ship. Uh, she's roughly comparable in size uh, and in many uses to a World War II aircraft carrier. So if you ever get the chance to visit one of the five museum aircraft carriers in this country, uh, that gives you some idea. She's also fairly comparable in size to, to many of the battleships we have, especially the Iowa class. Anyway, uh, she was in the shipyard at, yard at San Diego uh, and... I believe, as I understand it from watching the news the last 24 hours, uh, she had workers on board performing routine maintenance and either uh, an explosion occurred on board as a result of that or a fire broke out which then spread uh, and the fire quickly exceeded what the crew was able to handle. They only had a Sunday port time crew on board, so it wasn't like they had the full crew with all their damage control stuff. Uh, so several civilian firefighting outfits, along with the base firefighting outfit, were all called to the ship, uh, and they managed to evacuate the entire crew and all the civilians on board. However, there have been injuries, and people are still in the hospital as of this recording, so we're not out of the woods yet. But so far, there haven't been any fatalities, and we pray that there won't be. Uh, the ship was then entirely abandoned to let burn down. Uh, all of the ships that were moored nearby were moved because the heat from the fire was getting so great they didn't want it to spread. And some of those ships did have uh, live munitions on board, which uh, Bonham Richard fortunately did not have much in the way of that. So as of now, the fire is still burning in a more or less contained way, and that is contained to the entire vessel. Uh, she will likely be pretty well gutted afterwards, uh, and this will afford the Navy an excellent opportunity to see battle damage firsthand on one of their large warships, and that is something not often afforded. These ships have not been in any serious engagements, have not received any significant damage uh, in decades. So it will be a great assessment opportunity for the Navy to see exactly what went wrong, uh, how the ship's construction and design allowed things to spread out of control and uh, we will no doubt see changes in future ships. Whether or not Bonham Richard is ever returned to the active fleet 
is unclear. She was commissioned in 1998, so she's 22 years old at this point. That's uh, probably at least halfway through her life cycle. Uh, she did cost taxpayers a billion and a half dollars to initially build. So a significant investment. Almost anywhere else in the world, this type of ship would be the largest warship in their fleet. There are only a very few countries that have larger aircraft carrying vessels. Uh, and of course, these are second line aircraft carrying vessels for the United States, uh, which basically alone out of the world's Navy operates a fleet of super carriers uh, of twice the weight of these ships and even twice the weight of an Iowa class battleship. So to, to give you some context for Bonham Richard, how does she compare to New Jersey, a, a ship that you can come on and visit, a ship that we have showed off time and time again in our videos? USS New Jersey, as you probably know by this point, is 887 foot 7 inches long. Bonham Richard is 843 feet long, so very close, just some 40 or 45 feet shorter. New Jersey is 108 feet wide. Bonham Richard is 104 feet wide, so she can pass through the Panama Canal, just like an Iowa class battleship. She even has slightly more room to spare. Uh, she draws only 27 feet of water. Uh, she can get a little bit closer to the shore than an Iowa class battleship, which draws over 30 feet of water fully loaded, nearly 40 if you're really loaded down. Uh, displacement wise, she's up around 40,000 tons. So significantly lighter than a fully loaded Iowa, which would displace about 57,000 tons. However, we've got all this armor plate and she does not. So even though the ships are the same size, the, the density of the armor makes us a significantly heavier vessel. Size-wise, still incredibly uh, comparable. She may actually have more internal volume because she's a, a blockier design. She's got a hangar and a well deck uh, and is much more square to look at where Iowa class battleships taper significantly forward of turret one. In terms of crew, she operates with about 1,200 crew, significantly fewer than and Iowa was designed to have uh, with about 2,700 during World War II and about 1,600 in the 1980s. Uh, these ships are loose contemporaries, but the last Iowa's in service in 1992 and the first of the WASP class coming into service in uh, 1988. In fact, while Wisconsin was being reactivated at Pascagoula at Ingalls Shipbuilding, uh, in Pascagoula, Mississippi, some of the eight WASP class carriers were being built there simultaneously, including WASP herself. So she was launched and commissioned at roughly the same time Wisconsin was being worked on there. So th these are sort of contemporary vessels. They have very similar uh, weapon systems and electronics fits as far as the modern systems go. Uh, in terms of propulsion, Iowa's can do over 33 knots if their bottoms are clean. The Wasp can do uh, about 22 knots. She only has two boilers and two engines for most of the class, including Bonham Richard. Those are steam-powered, uh, geared turbines, although one of the class has uh, the more modern gas turbines installed. Uh, so the propulsion on these vessels is significantly less than New Jersey. New Jersey is designed for speed, keeping up with the fleet carriers. Uh, these ships are not designed for that. They have a range of just under 10,000 nautical miles at about 18 knots. Uh, the Iowas can do 15,000 nautical miles at 15 knots. Uh, so New Jersey is a very effective power projection asset. You can send her a third of the way around the globe in a very short period of time at high speed. Uh, the WASP class ships like Bonham Richard are not designed to do that, but they are designed to have staying power. They get over there at fairly high speed, much faster than uh, World War II convoy 
that was doing an amphibious landing, uh, but then they can operate there for, for a while. Both ships operate as the centerpieces of task forces. They, they are not designed to operate alone. They do not have uh, enough indigenous capability to do everything, surface engagement and air and undersea and landing operations and everything else. Uh, and the two ships do complement each other very well. Iowa-class battleships prove to be extremely effective at shore bombardment, both with their 16-inch and 5-inch guns, but also with their modern Tomahawk cruise missiles. Uh, and they supported, and could support, trained to support amphibious landings, the sort of which the WASP class, like Bonham Richard, were designed to do. So Bonham Richard has a flight deck, a hangar deck, and a well deck. The flight deck is where she carries her primary offensive equipment. Uh, those are her vertical takeoff and landing fighter aircraft and the helicopters. These helicopters can do a number of roles. Uh, there are attack helicopters like the Marine Corps' Cobra, uh, and there are a lot of transportation helicopters for carrying Marines to the beach. There are also uh, anti-submarine warfare helicopters like the Navy's Seahawks. Uh, and the air group of these carriers can be swapped out fairly easily. So you want to turn this into a strike carrier, you can put 20 F-35s and six Seahawks on board and do anti-submarine sweeps and launch strikes. Uh, you want to do an amphibious landing, you can carry six F-35s or AV-8B Harriers to do support. You can carry uh, you can carry four Cobras along with that to do support. You can carry 12 Ospreys to carry troops to the beaches. Four Sea Stallions, uh, which are very heavy lift helicopters. And then another four utility helicopters like the uh, Venom which is a derivative of the old venerable Hueys, the UH-1s. If you just want to do amphibious landings, you can carry 22 Ospreys here. But the air group isn't the only striking capability of these ships. They also have a well deck, which can flood and launch three LCACs, which are these uh, large inflatable, partially inflatable, amphibious vehicles that can carry a significant amount of troops and their vehicles ashore. Uh, and they've got a uh, space on board that can hold an entire marine expeditionary unit and their vehicles. So that's five Abrams tanks and some 60 other various types of vehicles that can all be transported ashore by uh, amphibious craft. And they can carry up to 60 amphibious personnel carriers and other things. So, so these vessels are, ex they have a lot of utility. Uh, they, they fit in with U.S. Navy doctrine and the type of wars we fight these days. They're not naval battle ships, but that's fine because we haven't been in a naval battle since World War II. They are uh, great landing ships for amphibious operations if we're doing contested beaches, if we're taking back a country, uh, these ships were all involved in, uh, not all of them, but some of these ships were involved in the second Gulf War, amphibious operations, uh, and other things like that. In addition to carrying a Marine Expeditionary Unit, they also have the facility to support that unit after it goes into combat. So they have a 64-bed hospital on board, Battleship New Jersey has a great medical space, but it's not that great. They also have six separate operating rooms on board. And they have the ability to set up a for further 536 beds if needed. These ships, uh, some of them were initially built for an all-male crew, but they've all been retrofitted, and some of them were purpose-built for both male and female sailors. And that's something that the Iowa class never got. So they have more access to the Navy's broader manpower than the Iowa's ever did. Uh, a Marine Expeditionary Unit would include about 17 
hundred troops and all the vehicles that we've already described. In terms of actual armament on these vessels, it's purely defensive. They have uh, two C-RAM rolling airframe missiles. Uh, they have up to four phalanx close-in weapon systems, which is the same number that the IO class have, although I believe Bonham Richard only had three. They have up to four 25 millimeter chain guns like the Iowa class had, uh, some of them at least. The Iowas only had two of these weapons. I believe Bonham Richard only had three, uh, but they're good close-in defensive weapons. If you want to see one of those, New Jersey is the only museum in the world where we have one of these contemporary weapon systems on display. They carried 450 calibers for close-in work, just like the Iowa class. Uh, New Jersey currently has two of those on display that you can even pull the triggers on. Uh, they also have a pretty broad electronics and countermeasures suite. So they have the Slick 32 uh, jamming equipment that the Iowas have. They have chaff launchers. They have a Nixie towed array like the Iowas have. Uh, the, the point defense weapons. So these ships actually have a better uh, anti-aircraft, anti-missile defense than the Iowa class has. In terms of offensive firepower, they've got nothing. Uh, and that was one downgrade that was deliberately chosen when the Tarawa class, which preceded them, was being replaced by the Wasp class. Uh, the Tarawas had five-inch guns, uh, and they deliberately chose to take offensive weapons off of these vessels and leave it up to the air group. Like I said before, Bonham Richard cost about $1.5 billion to build. That's roughly comparable if you adjust for in, uh, inflation for building an Iowa class ship. These ships called up, cost about $100 million in the 1940s, uh, and that comes out to probably about $2 billion today. They cost a further $300 million in the 1980s to build, uh, which is roughly the... Uh, excuse me. They cost a further $300 million in the 1980s to upgrade, which is roughly the inflated cost of initially building the vessels. Uh, so, the comparable price point here, which one gives you more value? This is a comparison video. The Iowa class are really great at one thing. They can do excellent shore bombardment work in the modern Navy. They're pretty good at uh, fighting other warships. If they have support, their own electronics are pretty anemic in the modern world, so detecting enemy warships isn't going to be great. But if they have supporting vessels that detect those warships, they have decent uh, missile batteries to engage them. And if somehow they're able to get within range of an enemy warship to use their main guns, it's all over. But shore bombardment is what these ships were brought back for in the 1980s. And they're really good at it, and they've no Navy ship has ever been able to replace them. The Harriers can support their own Marines. The Harriers and uh, F-35s that are launched from these amphibious warfare ships. But in bad weather, they can't fly. Uh, they can be shot down. A 16-inch shell cannot be. Uh, so. It's not as great. However, the amphibious warfare ships can not only transport troops to the battlefield, they can land troops, uh, project power in much the same way as a battleship can in a non-combat situation, but they can do something that the battleships cannot do effectively. The U.S. Navy hasn't fought surface battles in a while. We haven't really done many amphibious operations since World War II. What we have done a lot of is humanitarian relief work. When there's an emergency in the United States, like the various Gulf Coast uh, hurricanes that hit, or the earthquakes and other tsunamis, natural disasters overseas, the ship that you send in is a WASP class amphibious ship 
because they've got the medical facilities, they've got the transportation facilities, they've got a tremendous amount of space in their hangar and well deck, uh, and they've got trained personnel on board who can help with medical stuff and with getting supplies to people in areas that have now been cut off. That's what the 21st century Navy does. It's not shore bombardment and amphibious invasion. So for that reason, I would say that Bonham Richard is a much better investment than an Iowa-class battleship. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, that this helped fill in some uh, information about what's happening now in San Diego. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the crew members and civilians who were wounded during this and their families. We hope everybody makes a quick recovery. If you like what the channel does and would like to support us, check the description down below for ways to donate to the museum and our YouTube channel, and for some links to other videos uh, that tie into things we talked about today, like the medical facilities on an Iowa-class battleship. If you have any questions or comments, check out the comment section down below. We're pretty good about getting back to people with that. And as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content.